in the last episode, we flew into Southwest Florida and then drove from Fort Myers over to the store to get our provisions. And then we headed to the marina to wait for the Tropic Star Ferry. This is the ferry that brings you over to the island where Cayo Costa State Park is located. We set up our campsite and then headed over to the beach to watch this really awesome sunset. While we were waiting for the ramen noodles to cool off, I went and finished setting up our tent with our sleep system, our sleeping pads, and then pulled out our sleeping bags so they could fluff up a little bit before it was time to go to bed. This was Saturday night, and Saturday is always the hardest night of our trip to book a campsite because that's when the most people are out camping. I figured taking the ferry onto the island might give us the best chance of having a quieter night, but the campground was completely full and there were a ton of families, lots of kids, and there was even a sing-along going on after dark. So not a quiet experience for sure. After we ate, we headed down to the beach and endured the intense wind for a really nice sunset. After the sun went down, we headed back to our campsite. This would have been a great night for us to have picked up firewood from the camp store, which is located over by the ferry dock. They have all sorts of things over there. This ended up being the coldest night of our trip, and really it wasn't that bad, but with the wind and when you're going to Florida, I guess you kind of expect it to be warm, so maybe you notice it more. Be able to stargaze if you want to. Mm. Mm -hmm. It was really nice. Every time I would wake up in the middle of the night, mm. I was like, "There's no bears here." Mm. Yeah. It's always my my comforting thought. Mm. <laughs> Dogs playing with the as we sat and ate our breakfast, we watched all of our neighbors taking apart their giant tents and breaking down their campsites. It was a, a whole production. And then we walked over to check out the bathrooms. These are the showers. They have cold water, but they're showers. And this is the bathroom facility. So it has an ADA accessible ramp, which is really impressive. And there are flushing toilets in both the men's and the women's side. We were kind of expecting pit toilets like most state parks. And they have a camp sink, which is so helpful when you have a sink to wash up dishes and everything. We always bring this foldable tub, which acts like a camp sink when I need to wash up dishes and don't have access to a full sink. And we bring this little, little bottle of dishwashing soap and keep that all together in a kit so 
when I have to wash dishes, I just bring everything along with me. It really makes it easy. This is the women's side of the bathroom. You can see it's really pretty new. I'm not sure when they built this, but a very nice sink and three bathroom stalls. This is the bathroom over on the side with the cabins. These are a little bit older and they also have outdoor showers also with cold water, so I did not partake in the shower. I did the good old camp <laughs> cleanup with a, a soapy towel. Does the trick. Better than a cold shower. By the time we got back from our little walk, the campground had pretty much cleared out and it was just a totally different experience. We learned that this area is sometimes affected by red tide, which is a dangerous algae bloom. And they allow dogs at the campsite, which was great. There was a dog running around last night saying hi to everybody. But because of the birds, they don't allow the dogs on the beach. And then we learned about this really interesting gopher tortoise which is apparently a critical species in this area, but it says don't put them in the water, they don't swim. Very important. It's almost like a bird in Belize. Yeah. It like puffs up and screeches. <laughs> Not as loud. Yeah. These are aggressive in Belize. Mm. Mm -hmm. I did wake up to bird sounds though. Yeah. So the um, tram just left and today's Sunday so a lot of people cleared out and it's much less windy than it was yesterday and it's starting to warm up finally so uh, we're gonna go walk around and explore the island go straight yeah golf trail it's mini florida <laughs> it's kind of like upside down mini florida mm -hmm. to see the Spanish moss and like the little air plants. It's a little tropical hike. Yeah, very different from what we usually do. Yeah. As we headed up the trail, we came out to an opening for the beach and we went out to check it out. This island is really well known for the variety of shells that you can find on the beach. This was the first time that either of us had been on the Gulf side of Florida and I guess maybe we were expecting the water to be as warm as it was when we did our trip to Puerto Rico last year because the water was amazing in Puerto Rico but that's definitely farther south so a little bit different. The water in southwest Florida is still chilly in February but the actual reason that we scheduled this trip is because we're scouting out land. So we wanted to intersperse some days of just relaxing on the beach, but we also wanted to scout out the area to figure out where we want to buy land so that we can eventually relocate the tiny house. Florida is the most RV and trailer friendly state. So this is what we've really honed in on, plus the weather but we know if we want to stay living legally in a tiny house that this is probably our best bet. But for those of you who are stuck in a colder climate, like we usually are, dreaming of sunshine and some sand, here's a little bit more of that for you.
to the cemetery. Is there actually a cemetery? I don't know. Yeah. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. 